In this video, we're going to attempt to fix some surface problems on a Subaru WRX STI model in Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're gonna to add to our Fusion Form series by taking a look at some problems that arise when we're making these designs in Fusion. Now, the series that we did originally just covered the hood and part of the front fender. I didn't go into detail about creating the rest of the body, and this body is far from complete, but all the tools that we learned in how to create the hood and how to work our way over to the fender all of those will translate into making the rest of the body. There are, of course, some challenges, but having those challenges along the way are really what are going to separate you from being able to create these kinds of models on your own, as opposed to just following along step by step. So the model here that we see can be downloaded from the description in this video. And it's gonna give you a starting point for us to explore some other areas and potentially take it on your own to add a bit more detail. So remember that we have a couple hotkeys that we wanna make sure that we're comfortable with. If you're on a Mac, you'll be using Command. If you're on a PC, you'll be using the Control key. Control key in the number four will get rid of these edges and Control in the number six will bring them back. This is good to do because we can go back and forth and we can really take a look at the surface quality in some areas. And as we move through, you can see there are things like a slight ridge that appears across the roof and if we use Control or Command-6 to bring those back, likely we can see that we've got two edges that are relatively close together and we need to smooth some things out. We can use Alt and the number one. And when we use Alt and the number one, we go into box display. And you'll notice that those two edges are much closer together in box display than they are in smooth display. And this is really why we're seeing that seam or that ridge across the roof is because in box display, those are really close together. Some other things that I've done with this model from our original tutorial is I got rid of the crease on the hood and I used two edges close together to create that crease as it goes down the hood and around the body. Now, this is a challenge in itself and it did produce a couple issues that still need to be addressed. There's a, an issue on the opening here where the surface sort of dips in and you can see there are some slight inconsistencies around the edge that need just to be worked out a little bit. But the main reason that I wanted to make this video is because oftentimes when we're creating these models, some problems arise. Things like a small dip or crease that happens on the fender here. And sometimes we have issues where the hood scoop in this case, it just doesn't blend in with the rest of the hood. So this is a really big challenge and it's not something I'm gonna tackle in this video, but I do wanna talk about ways in which we can explore trying to fix that fender. So I'm gonna bring back my edge display, which is again, control or command six on the keyboard. And then I wanna go into box display and just take a look at the box display underneath. We wanna to try to find a reason that we might have an issue in this specific face. Again, alt and the number three will go back to smooth. Alt and two will show our control frame with the smooth underlay and one will be our box display. So everything looks okay in this area. And one thing that I notice is that this edge right here, you'll notice that the rest of these edges sort of taper and go around the fender. And this one hangs a bit higher, which means that the curvature here is influencing uh, the rest of this geometry. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna go back to my smooth display and notice that in some areas, like sometimes when we rotate, we don't really see that problem. So a good first step oftentimes is to make sure that there is actually a problem there. Now, using utilities like repair body, they're not gonna find issues on those surfaces. Oftentimes what you wanna do is finish the form, which th this will convert it to a surface body, which we wanna go ahead and show. And then we wanna take a look at that surface body to see if we actually have a problem there. And you'll notice that when it converts it to the surface body, everything looks fine. If we go over to the render workspace and we take a look at this, you can see that we don't have that issue there. So this is one of those cases where really taking a look at the way that this body is converted and the way that it's actually displayed in the design workspace or in the render workspace is important because again, that might save us a lot of work. And again, you can use control four and control six or command four and six 
to uh, hide or show those edges. And you can see here that everything looks nice and smooth. If I view this from the front, it's gonna go back to our orthographic view, but everything looks pretty smooth here. Now it is important to note that the shading and the renderer that happens in the design workspace is different than it is in the render workspace. In the render workspace, it's going to look a little bit better and we might be able to actually highlight some potential issues. Now, everything looks okay here. There are some wrinkles that we see that happen for example, right here where the fender and the door meet, you can see that there is a slight issue there. So I'm gonna hop back to design. I'm gonna hide the body and I'm gonna go back into my form body, which will allow me to view what's going on. And you'll notice that when I rotate this around, I don't really see that issue here. We still have this sort of weird display issue that's happening, but what we're focusing on is something that happens in the fender. Now. Again, we don't really see that issue here. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is go to inspect. I'm gonna take a look at that curvature map analysis. The curvature map analysis oftentimes will help us highlight some of these issues. And what I'm looking for here are going to be some disjointed colorations. So I'm gonna kick the scale all the way up and I'm actually gonna to go to the principal maximum and I wanna take a look. What we want to identify is whether or not a color simply stops when it gets to one of these edges. So you see that these two purple uh, sort of colorations stop when they get close to those edges and then it's yellow right on that edge. And this is likely going to cause a problem in the conversion. Some other things that we might look for is uh, the color just sort of stopping or disappearing when it gets close to one of those edges, even if it doesn't change. And another thing that we see here is the sort of purple and yellow disjointed. So a lot of times we wanna pay attention to these things. What we like to see is we like to see a nice smooth transition of these colors. For example, when we look at the front of the headlight, you can see that we have orange blending into yellow, blending into green and fading back. And then we have this crease that's fairly consistent. And these are the types of things that we wanna look for. We wanna avoid these rapid changes in curvature and those rapid changes in curvature are going to be the things that produce those surface issues. So I'm gonna hit cancel so that I'm, I'm not actually taking a look or saving that analysis. I'm gonna go back to my box display and I wanna focus on what's going on here. So in this area, we have a really tight section or really tight um, distance between these two edges. And then if we rotate this around, you, it's gonna be kind of hard to see, but this sort of flares out and then it goes straight back. It, it's not a real smooth transition. If we were to select the small face and go back to our smooth display, you can see that it obviously looks a bit different here, but in box display, that is a really tight transition. And that means that the fender is, is likely flaring out and back in in one section. And that's a change in curvature that we want to avoid. So I'm gonna to go to a right view and the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a look at my modify tools and I'm gonna to try to use some of these tools such as straighten. Now straighten will allow me to select vertices and in this case, I'm gonna just start selecting vertices going down this edge. And what's gonna happen is as I begin selecting these vertices, it's gonna begin putting them in a straight line. It's gonna average their position. Now, while I'm doing this, I can go back and forth between smooth and box display. So this is another good thing that we wanna make sure that we remember is that we're not locked in that box display. With this tool, we are able to go back and forth. So I'm gonna say, okay, remembering that we can always come back and undo this. And I do wanna just quickly mention that there are a couple of options in here. Fit is going to average the position between all the selected vertices. If we were to use a selected line, a selected parallel line or two points, then we're actually really forcing the issue of what we want that line to be. That would be great if we were trying to replicate a door seam um, or actually you know, hack the body up so that we have that, that edge there. But in this case, we're not. We're just going to allow it to average those control points and we're gonna say okay. Now again, control and four, I'm gonna get rid of those edge displays and sort of rotate this around. And the transition looks smooth and that's what I'm happy with. And again, the shading and the rendering that happens in the form tools and the design tools, it's a little bit different than the render workspace. So it's always a good idea that you don't get too hung up on some of the minor things that you see like this, which is uh, a potential issue that we could fix in here, but it's not really gonna 
hurt anything downstream once the body is converted to what's considered a B rep. So we're gonna go back to our box display. And the next thing that I wanna do is I really wanna focus on the distance between these vertices. Now, one thing that Fusion doesn't really have um, that I sort of miss from other subdivided modelings is the ability to actually slide these vertices along edges. Now, I will say that we do have modify and we do have the ability to slide the edge. The problem with this slide edge is that it's affecting the geometry underneath. In other software, you actually have the ability to slide the edge while keeping the curvature continuous. So again, that's something that we're missing here, which means that we need to be just a little bit more careful. But I, I do wanna take this vertex, I'm gonna modify it. Again, I'm working in plane, I'm in a side or a right view, and I'm just gonna move it up a little bit. And this very minor amount is gonna make the consistent width between these two edges taper down a little bit more gradually before it goes to a really narrow sort of section there. And the reason that it's really narrow there is because we are trying to get a crease on the door. So we're, we're looking to replicate a crease or a style line that is on the car. And so that's why we have those two edges close together. If they weren't close together, then we would simply have a smooth blend or transition. Now, again, you have to you have to look at the actual car, uh, and sometimes it's hard to pick up in pictures. In the real car, this rear fender flare actually does blend into the door and sort of disappear. But in this version, I actually liked the style line. I, I kind of played around with this a little bit, and I liked keeping the, the sort of box flare style line in the middle of the car. So that's an area where I sort of departed a little bit from the images I had. And again, I don't have one of these cars, so I can't just go out and look at it and really take a look at those minute details. But now that we've made that adjustment, let's go ahead and use Control or Command-6 to bring those edges back. And let's make sure in box display that we haven't done anything that we're going to regret. So let's rotate this around. And you can see that this position here still appears to flare out. I'm gonna go to front, which again is gonna be orthographic. And you can see right here, that vertex sort of flares out, then the door and the fender come back in, and then they flare back out as they get closer to the rear. Now the rear is okay, that flare out is fine, but this right here does not make a whole lot of sense. So in order to fix this, I'm gonna to go to a top view and I'm gonna just take a look at this door line. So the door line generally is fairly straight. Some cars will taper back a little bit toward the rear door and then they'll sort of begin to taper back in in the rear wheel section. So in most cases, that's the way that these cars are shaped. So for this to flare at this point doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So I'm gonna move this in and really what I'm focusing on, I'll use Control Z to go back. Really what I'm focusing on is taking this line, and this is the same set of vertices that we used that, that um, feature, that tool that allowed us to put them in a line. And what I wanna do is I wanna begin to gradually transition this. And what I'm looking for is a consistent distance between the two edges on this door face. Uh, I don't want them to taper toward the front. And in some cases, I might actually want them to taper toward the midline. And I can do the same thing with this vertex here. I can pull that in a little bit. And again, what I'm looking for is I don't want these to taper. So if we go back to a front view and we take a look, uh, again, this is where we're working and, and it looks a lot better. We could do a little bit more work. We could potentially flare the doors out a little bit, but that looks pretty good. I could take it in just a little bit more and be okay. And it's always a good idea to go back and forth between smooth and box display. Because what we're doing here is we're really looking at very finite or minute controls. I'm gonna double click the mouse wheel to fit the screen. And when we convert these to smooth display, all of these underlying patches get stretched out and, and smoothed out. So you have to remember when you're looking at box display, this is controlling the underlying curvature. We're giving it control or reference points. We're telling it you know, essentially what this rough surface is supposed to look like and then we're converting it, we're smoothing it out underneath. If you use that second option, which um, shows the control, the box display, and then the smooth surface underneath, it can be kind of hard to tell, but you can kind of see in the back fender here that this is our box display, and then the surface underneath 
is, is using that curvature as a reference. And again, that's kind of a hard thing to visualize, but if you remember from the first video in the series, we talked about splines and spline control, and that's really where we focused on this topic, was understanding what happened there. Another thing that you wanna look at when you're identifying problems to fix or areas to work on is going to be the consistency with these edges. Now, in a lot of cases, when you look down the line of a car, you'll be able to see the style line and it won't hop up and then back down unless there's a bulge or a flare on the hood here. Now, if you think about a vehicle like uh, the Ford Raptor, the Ford Raptor, the fender flares sort of go out from the door and the doors reminiscent or the same as, as the standard F-150 but the fenders sort of flare up and out. So you would expect to see that sort of flare on a, a truck like that, but you wouldn't expect to see it in this car. So again, that's an area that we might wanna consider doing some work on and really identify whether or not we want that to flare up. Again, it's it's gonna be a style thing. We are basing this on the car and and at this point, we are taking some uh, some liberties on what we want this to look like. But I think that's a great point for us to stop. We've identified a couple things, uh, in this case, the fender sort of issue that we saw here, and we identified that it wasn't really a problem. And then we looked at some other areas, some things that we could potentially change or fix and ways to identify those and some of the tools that we wanna use. I strongly suggest that you play around and try to identify a few areas and work on areas like I pointed out, like the grill here where it sort of rolls back and in. Try to work on that area, see if you can smooth it out. Maybe use some of the tools, uh, you know, such as the inspect tools and do a curvature or a zebra analysis and identify different areas where you, you might want to adjust the curvature. You can always go back to the download in the link and use that as a starting point, but this is a great sort of step off point. If you haven't been able to create any more of the model or if you've had difficulty, this one gives you a great starting point. You can work on the style lines and the seams that happen in the door. Uh, you can see that there is a small style line that I added to the rear. In this car, there's sort of this little lip that happens on the trunk. Uh, so I've, I've sort of added that. But there are plenty of areas that still need a lot of work. Things like this rear taillight area are just cut out and they're not really refined. Um, the spoiler could use a little bit of work. There's obviously no glass, but uh, there, there is a start to things like the windowsill area, but that's only in the sides. It's not on the front or the rear. So again, this gives you a great starting point to continue playing around with and um, adding some of those extra little features, finishing off the bumper, the side skirts and diffusers and things like that that come along with these cars. So if you have any questions, please let me know. I do plan to do a little bit more on this model. Uh, originally, I was not intending on creating videos to model the rest of it because it's pretty much a lot of the same. You're gonna carry on the same process that we've already learned. But there are a few things in modeling this that I've come across that I really wanted to explain. So I am gonna come back to this model again and do a little bit more work. I'm not sure if it'll be exactly in this form or a little bit more polished, but um, I do wanna come back to it again at least one more time to talk about a few more of these trouble spots. But again, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.